What's going on, noobs? I am Rory, the Perpetual Noob, and welcome back to another exciting Hollow Knight boss discussion. This is the 22nd video in a series where I'll be discussing each boss of Hollow Knight. Where we can find them, how we can defeat them, and how does this boss fit into the world of Hollow Knight. Today is another special day because we are talking about the true final boss of Hollow Knight. The very boss that set all events in Hollow Knight into motion. The Radiance. This video is even more special because we are only talking about two of the three topics today. Where we can find the Radiance, and how we can defeat the Radiance. We'll be discussing how the Radiance fits into the world of Hollow Knight in the next video because there is so much to talk about. We find the Radiance inside the Hollow Knight, who is inside the Temple of the Black Egg, which is located in the top center of the Forgotten Crossroads. The Temple of the Black Egg is marked on the map with a lovely illustration. To get inside the Hollow Knight, we need to accomplish several things. Defeat all three dreamers. Acquire the Dream Nail and awaken it. Acquire the Void Heart. And get through the first three phases of the Hollow Knight fight. Then, as the fourth phase starts, Hornet will hold the Hollow Knight down for several seconds and dreamy floating bits will waft from the Hollow Knight's head. Strike the Hollow Knight's head with our Dream Nail and we'll be transported to the Radiance's pocket of the Dream Realm. I'll be honest, I had to go to the internet to learn that there even was a Radiance boss, let alone how to reach her. Please see my Watcher Knight, Umu, Hornet 2, and Hollow Knight videos for more information regarding the Dreamers, Dream Nail, Void Heart, and Hollow Knight Fight. A couple special notes about the Radiance. We will always have to fight the Hollow Knight and get the Hollow Knight to Phase 4 to reach her. Fighting the Radiance is always a two-boss fight, kind of. Our health always resets to full when we enter the Dream Realm, so we don't have to be super safe when fighting the Hollow Knight. We can fight the Radiance multiple times. Defeating her doesn't end our game or start us in a sort of new game plus, which means we are free to continue exploring, collect more items, and partake in any new content that might arise. The first time we fight the Radiance, and every first time after loading a save file, we will need to challenge her. Subsequent attempts without loading a save file don't require challenging her. Instead, we just get right to the fight. Every attack the Radiance has, except one, does two points of damage to us. This exception attack does only one point of damage to us. The Radiance will shoot 12 swords from her face. This attack occurs in phases 1, 2, and 4. These swords point outward in a burst-like formation. The swords form one at a time, circling the Radiance's face either in a clockwise or counterclockwise order, but the circle starts with a random sword. Once all swords are formed, the Radiance tilts her head forward, launching all swords simultaneously. Each sword travels in the direction it is pointing. The angle each sword points at can be different for each attack. The Radiance telegraphs this attack when her face is obfuscated with an oval-shaped intense light. Short rays stretch out from this oval, taking moments to form into a sword. When the final sword finishes forming, the Radiance will tilt her head forward and all swords will shortly, within a couple frames, launch away from the Radiance's face simultaneously. The whole process from the first ray appearing to all swords firing takes about one second. Let's call this attack the Sword Burst Attack. The Radiance summons a wall of light that crosses the arena. This attack occurs in phases 1, 2, and 4. This wall of light crosses the arena from left to right or right to left. The wall takes about 3.5 seconds to cross the floor. The dangerous part of the wall is the large, wide beam. The leading and trailing lines of light are harmless. The wall moves about as fast as we do when we're dashing. There is a variation to this attack which involves the wall of light disappearing at the middle of the arena. A second wall of light may spawn just as soon as that first wall reaches the middle of the arena. This attack is telegraphed when you hear this noise. If we are at the edge of the arena where the wall is appearing, we'll see a couple of thin lines of light appear before the large wall appears. The Radiance herself provides no visual cues. Let's call this attack the Wall of Light Attack. The Radiance summons walls of swords to shoot across the arena. This attack occurs in phases 1, 2, and 4. These swords will move as a group across the arena, left to right, or right to left. 
Each wall of swords is comprised of six swords arranged randomly along nine rows, ensuring that there will always be some gaps that we can fit in. In phases one and two, this attack involves four walls of swords. Wall two starts two seconds after wall one. Walls three and four start about one and a half seconds after walls two and three, respectively. In the fourth phase, two walls are summoned. Wall two starts two seconds after wall one. Each wall of swords takes about three seconds to cross the arena. During this attack, all walls travel in the same direction. This attack is telegraphed when you hear this noise. If we are at the edge of the arena where the swords are coming from, we'll see short rays of light appear on the edge of the arena. Within moments, the rays transform into swords, and a few frames later, the swords begin moving. Each wall is telegraphed like this. The Radiance herself provides no visual cues. Let's call this attack the Sword Wall Attack. The Radiance will summon orbs of light that home in on us. This attack occurs in phases 1, 2, and 4. This attack involves three orbs, each orb appearing about one and a half seconds after the previous. Orbs will track us until they strike us, strike a surface, or disappear. An orb will disappear after about three seconds if it doesn't hit anything. Orbs can pass through surfaces in their first half second of life. Orbs can spawn from anywhere. The Radiance telegraphs this attack when they lift their head and stop flapping their wings, instead just wiggling them around. Bright, dreamy bits will collect somewhere in the arena. Then a bright, orangey, yellowy light will appear at that collection point, becoming an orb that will try to kill us. Let's call this attack the Orb Attack. The Radiance will cover part of the floor with spikes. This attack occurs in Phases 2 and 3. In Phase 2, the spikes will be in one group, cover half the floor, and persist for 5 seconds. In Phase 3, the spikes persist forever, and there can be two groups of spikes on each side of the floor, covering a total of half the floor, or just one group on one side, covering about 25% of the floor. Unlike every other Radiance attack, the spikes do only one point of damage. This attack is telegraphed when a group of small rings of light form on the floor. These lights will pulse with a teeny flare 11 times. On the 12th pulse, the flare will grow. This larger flare transforms into a spike. It takes about two seconds for spikes to form. The Radiance herself provides no visual cues. Let's call this attack the Spike Floor Attack. The Radiance will fire multiple beams of light from her face three times. This attack occurs in phases one, two, and four. Each burst consists of eight beams spread evenly around the Radiance at 45 degree angles. Each burst of beams is rotated randomly from the previous burst. The beams are dangerous for about half of a second and only when the beams are at their widest. The Radiance telegraphs this attack when her face is obfuscated with an oval-shaped intense light. Thin beams of light radiate out from the Radiance's face, signaling where the first group of beams will be. The oval-shaped light grows and intensifies, as does the beams, which pulse brighter while expanding and contracting three times. Then the beams grow to their widest and become dangerous. As the first burst of beams shrink and disappear, the next burst of beams appear, thin at first, telegraphing where the second burst of beams will be. This pattern repeats one more time for the third and final burst of beams. Let's call this attack the Beam Burst Attack. The Radiance summons swords to rain down on us. This attack occurs in phases one through three. These swords will move as a group. Each group of swords is comprised of 12 swords arranged randomly across 18 columns. The columns upon which the swords travel shifts to the left or right slightly with each group. There will always be large safe spaces between some swords, and even the space between two adjacent swords is wide enough for us to stand safely. In phases one and two, this attack will involve four groups of swords. Group two starts one and a half seconds after group one. Groups three and four start one second after groups two and three, respectively. In Phase 3, there is an infinite amount of swords, and each group starts within one second of the previous group. This attack is telegraphed when you hear this noise. Short rays of light appear at the top of the arena. Within moments, the rays transform into swords, 
but they take nearly half a second before falling. Each group is telegraphed like this. The Radiance herself provides no visual cues. Let's call this attack the Sword Rain Attack. The Radiance fires a single large beam of light. This attack only occurs in Phase 5. The beam's accuracy improves the further into Phase 5 we get. The beam is dangerous for about a quarter of a second and only when the beam is at its widest. A beam is fired every one and a half seconds. This attack is telegraphed when a thin line of orange light appears. This thin line pulses brighter while expanding and contracting six times over about one second before expanding into the big beam. Let's call this attack the Big Beam Attack. There is a lot going on with this fight. The Radiance attacks often. The Radiance teleports around the arena, never staying in the same place for long. She is always in the air. Her attacks can sometimes blend into the background. The Radiance's hitbox is only the fluffy stuff. We can't hit her legs or wing-like appendages. But the Radiance deals no contact damage. We can touch any part of the Radiance and we won't get hurt. The Radiance fight has five phases. The first phase is when we fight her in an open arena. As the Radiance fight progresses, she starts attacking so often we sometimes have to deal with two or even three attacks at once. After dealing enough damage to the Radiance, we move on to Phase 2. Phase 2 starts when the spike floor attacks start. Everything else is the same as Phase 1. After dealing enough damage to her, we move on to Phase 3. Phase 3 is when we get the infinite sword rain attack, the permanent spike floor attack variation, and we see the void creep in. Phase 3 will last forever if we don't attack the Radiance. After dealing enough damage to the Radiance, we move on to Phase 4. At the end of Phase 3, the Radiance falls to the floor and Void Tendrils grab her, trying to pull her down. The Radiance escapes and we see dreamy bits float upward. Some platforms form above us, signaling that we need to jump to the next phase of the fight. If we stay on the floor too long, the Void overtakes us, doing one point of damage to us. If that happens, we do respawn right where we need to be for Phase 4. In Phase 4, we have 8 small platforms and the Radiance still has every attack except the Spike Floor and Sword Rain attacks. After dealing enough damage to her, she'll disappear again, leaving a trail of dreamy bits floating up. The platforms to the left and right disappear, and a new platform will appear at the top right of the screen. Once again, we need to go up. Thus begins the fifth and final phase of the Radiance fight. The Radiance will use her big beam attack as we jump from platform to platform. If that wasn't scary enough, the void rises to just below the highest platform we're standing on. As we reach higher platforms, more of our siblings rise with us. The higher we go, the more accurate the big beam attack gets. Finally, we reach the Radiance, and with a single strike of our nail, no other damage works, we trigger the final sequence of this fight. This is essentially the end of the Radiance fight, so we'll talk about that later in the video. The Radiance was not an easy boss for me. The fact that nearly every attack does two points of damage really challenged me. I tried several of my usual charm combinations to no avail, and eventually went with the tried and true face tank method. And even that fight wasn't stellar. One of the most important lessons I learned is managing my Shade Cloak. The Shade Cloak dash was one of the most important abilities because, aside from being the only way to dodge the Wall of Light, it helped me survive many sword wall attacks and get out of tricky situations. It is possible to jump through every sword wall, but some maneuvers and attack combinations were just too much for me. Since I used a face tank strategy, I had nothing to use my soul for except spells, and there was only one spell that I knew was best for this fight, Abyss Shriek, which is the empowered version of Howling Wraiths. Abyss Shriek without Shaman Stone will do up to 80 damage per cast. That's essentially four strikes from a pure nail. We get Abyss Shriek if we cast Howling Wraiths while standing on the small pedestal in the room that is located at the bottom left of the Abyss. Abyss Shriek is so useful in this fight because the Radiance is almost always above us. I did learn that we can damage the Radiance during almost every one of her attacks. The best times are during the Sword Burst and Beam Burst attacks. As long as the Radiance is in a large gap, we can score damage against her during the Sword Rain attack. We can score damage with our Nail, spells take too long, 
during the orb and sword wall attacks too. Despite the craziness that is this fight, if we manage our dodges and our jumps well, we can consistently damage the Radiance. My charms for my first successful fight against the Radiance were Joni's Blessing, Lifeblood Core, Lifeblood Heart, and Thorns of Agony. Originally, I had only 9 hit points, which meant I could only take 4 hits before dying. I was taking a lot of hits, and I didn't know when to heal, so I needed survivability. Thanks to Joni's Blessing, I now had 14 hit points. Because when we get 50% plus 1, the 50% is rounded down to 4. Then add Lifeblood Heart, 2 more hit points, and Lifeblood Core, 4 more hit points, and I had a total of 20 hit points, meaning I could now survive 9 hits before dying. Thanks to the lessons I had learned up to that point, I was getting hit less, but still more than 4 times. I beat the Radiance for the first time when the max amount of charm notches was 10. Equipping those 3 previous charms meant that I had only one charm notch left, and because it's me, that meant Thorns of Agony! I'd rather I didn't get hit at all, but Thorns of Agony proved to be pretty useful because the Radiance has a large hitbox, and those tendrils have some long reach. Like I said earlier, Abyss Shriek is a fantastic spell for this fight. Howling Wraiths would work, but due to everything we've already had to do to even get the opportunity to fight the Radiance, I highly recommend you return to the Abyss and get Abyss Shriek. And then spam this spell over and over again. A word of caution, the Radiance can't be interrupted by anything, and Abyss Shriek freezes us in place while it's casting, so we might take some damage while casting it if we don't time it right. Since a spell is the most efficient way to fight this boss, equipping Shaman Stone is so useful. Even when I was capturing more footage to show other charm options, I was always thinking, I wish I had Shaman Stone so this fight would be easier. The combination of Abyss Shriek and Shaman Stone is that good. Charms like Soul Catcher and Soul Eater are great for keeping our soul gauge as full as possible for maximum spell casting or healing. If we're low on soul by the time we reach phase 4 of the Hollow Knight fight, we can strike the Hollow Knight 3 to 4 times with a pure nail before we strike them with our dream nail. Striking 5 times with a pure nail is too much damage and Hornet will be tossed aside, ending that chance to fight the Radiance. Nail extending charms like Long Nail and Mark of Pride are great because we don't have to jump as high to hit the Radiance, which means we can land sooner and be ready to dodge incoming attacks sooner. In addition to the life boosting charms I used, Unbreakable Heart is another option. Don't use the Fragile Charms, because despite the Radiance fight being in the Dream Realm, we are considered dead when we lose, so Fragile Charms will break. Charms, Balder Shell, Shape of Un, and Quick Focus are all great healing choices. I would highly recommend Shape of Un and Quick Focus together for maximum mobility while healing. The only attacks we can't dodge with that combination are the Sword Wall and Wall of Light. We can avoid everything else. If you opt to not use any charms to help with healing, it is safest to heal during the Beam Burst, during the last group, Sword Rain, and Sword Burst attacks. You could sneak in a heal during the Sword Wall attack if you can see two walls in a row that you won't need to dodge. The third phase is another great time to get in some healing. Wait for the same gap to appear in two rows of swords. Since that phase has a fairly consistent pattern and will go on forever, we can be patient. Steady Body is another solid one-notch charm, especially during Phase 4. Even though the music for the Radiant fight is great, it's a useful tactic to mute the music and crank up the effects volume, since many of the Radiance's attacks provide little to no visual cues. I like to focus on what works in this section, but as a heads up, Dream Shield does not block any of the Radiance's attacks, and since there are much better offensive charms for three notches, Dream Shield is essentially useless here. The Radiance is supposed to be the final challenge of Hollow Knight, the culmination of everything we've done in Hollow Nest. As such, this fight will challenge us in every way. To make this fight as easy as possible, I recommend upgrading your nail to the highest level, the Pure Nail. So visit that nailsmith, who resides at the bottom left of the City of Tears. I needed all of the hit points I could have, so I recommend finding every Mask Shard. Since spells were my main source of damage, I recommend collecting every soul vessel, so you have access to essentially two whole soul gauges. I recommend collecting every charm notch, 
and, just to be thorough, every charm. Please see the Soul Master video for a more in-depth general discussion about playstyles and the link in the description for a great video about charm combinations. When we trigger the final sequence of the Radiance fight, we see the Radiance knocked back, appearing to be stunned. Void Tendrils grab at the Radiance again, holding her in place. Then the Hollow Knight's own shade shows up and pulls the Radiance's face open, exposing the light contained within. We shatter our own shell, exposing the empowered shade we've become. Then we mash that attack button, striking at the Radiance's very core with our own Void Tendrils until her light uncontrollably escapes. This puts the Radiance in such a weakened state that the Void Tendrils holding her in place are able to drag the Radiance down into the Void below, consuming her. The Dream No More cutscene begins. The Void had seemingly overtaken the Temple of the Black Egg, and now recedes back into the Abyss. We see Hornet stand up, safe and sound. She looks back at where we should be. All that remains is our shattered mask. We're shown our siblings in the Abyss looking upward before disappearing, presumably returning to the Void. Then, fade to black. That's it for part one of our boss discussion about the Radiance. Thank you for joining me today, noobs. Stay tuned for future Hollow Knight boss videos, including part two of the Radiance, where we discuss the lore of the Radiance herself and how she fits into the world of Hollow Knight. If you've got any thoughts about the Radiance fight, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. I am the Perpetual Noob, and I'll see you all next time.